Hey groups, good to see you all again. Um, we are continuing in our series on Sticks and Stones, but before we get too deep into content, um, last week we had Kristen come up and share some information about missions with our groups. Um, and if you guys meet every other week, we wanted to tag that onto the back. So um, if you didn't get a chance to see that, uh, watch this video all the way through. Uh, Kristen's going to come up on the end of the video of what they shot last week um, and just share some really cool opportunities that groups can step into mission together um, and really international mission. What does it mean to go on mission together? So uh, super exciting. Make sure you check that out at the end of this video. Otherwise, um, we are in our series on sticks and stones. Um, and uh, this week we talked about um, information a bit and instruction and how we get those things. Um, and I think it is so interesting that just a few hundred years ago, um, information was coming on horseback, right? You want no information for potentially weeks, depending on how far away it was. And in today's world, we see information and we can get information at the tips of our fingers. It doesn't take us long to figure out really whatever we want to know. Um, but the question that was asked, um, that Eric asked throughout this message is, where do you get your information from? What is your source? Um, consider the source that you're getting from. Are you okay with that information coming from that person? Or are you relying potentially on what the Bible says to be true? Um, it was a really good teaching. If you didn't get a chance, take a look closer at that. Um, but we're going to dive right into questions now. Um, kids, uh, I won't be going through the questions on here, but make sure you guys look at the bottom of the sheet and you guys can go through some of the kids' questions. Otherwise, adults, um, we are jumping right in. Question number one, um, and this has to do with the challenge from that last week. How did the challenge about avoiding gossip and slander go for you? Were there any challenges in that? Question number two. When you look for information or where you, when you need to find information, where do you go to? Let's use some specifics here. Um, if your car is making a funny sound, where do you look? Um, how long is pasta supposed to boil? This is one I've definitely searched on my own. Where do you look for that? How warm is it in Alaska in July? If you're looking for just some of these random things, where do you look to find your information? Question number three, um, we're going to take that one step deeper. Where do you look when you need some insight? Maybe it's insight about your career. Where do you go? Maybe you're having marriage problems. Where do you turn to? Uh, maybe you're looking to pick out a college. Who do you go to see? Um, and once you answer some of those questions, uh, think about why do you go to these people? Right? Why do you go to these specific sources? And what makes you confident that these sources, the ones that you've chosen, are the right ones to go to? They're ones that you can trust. Why is that? Question number four, um, and this is for those of us or those of you who have kids. Um, where do your kids go for insight? Be honest. Should they be going to that spot or that location for insight? Um, why or why not? All right, and then number five, I want you guys to start by reading from James 3, verse 9 through 12. Um, and then we've got a lot of questions that are coming out of that. So read through James 3, 9 through 12, and then come back to these questions. All 
All right. In these questions, uh, Eric explained this weekend to consider the source. How does someone go about considering the source? When we think about considering our source, where is your source, right? What is that source for you? And is that reflective in the way that you talk and the way that you act? Why, oh, this is a good question. Why do we wait until you are in a crisis or why do we wait until we're in a crisis to look for wisdom or insight? Picture an athlete for, with me for a minute. Um, when they're training for a big race, um, when they know there's a, something on the horizon that's coming, um, they'll drink plenty of fluids, they'll eat the right things leading up to this thing. Um, know, having that picture in your mind, how can we apply that same practice when it comes to the word of God in our lives? Because if we're honest, we know there's always something coming that's gonna hit us. Um, how do we apply that same mindset of a runner and do those things in our life now. All right, here's the last question in this. Do you feel equipped to use the word of God as a source? Or when you think of the word of God does it scare you? Um, how can we as the foundry help you do that? Um, and group leaders, as you guys talk about that, we would love to hear the responses uh, because at the foundry, we are a Bible believing church and we wanna make sure that we know how to use it and we feel prepared to use it as a source. So we'd love your feedback on these this response. Um, so group leaders, make sure if your group is comfortable with it, uh, reaching out to us, let us know how we can help and how we can assist in making sure you feel comfortable using the word of God as a source. All right, question number six. I wanted you to start by reading Proverbs 4, verse 23, and then look at these questions. In what ways do you currently guard your heart? What ways are you doing that right now? And what things may have slipped in even though you're trying to guard it? What extra defenses do you need to put in place to guard your heart? All right, and number seven, the challenge for this week that I want you guys to take away is um, for this week to stop cursing others in your life. Be intentional about thinking throughout this week what it means to stop cursing those who are around you. Guard your heart, guard the things that you say. I mean, if you got time, um, check out our Digging Deeper section. We're looking at the story in Matthew 12 about Jesus speaking, speaking to the Pharisees. Um, and if you got time, it's a great way to look a little bit deeper into what we're talking about now. Otherwise, um, can't wait to see you guys next week. Again, if you missed the mission um, information last week, make sure you hang on to follow this video about some really good opportunities coming up. Uh, have a great week. Hey Foundry Church, my name is Stone Felty and normally you see Matt up here, but 
Matt was unable to be here, so I'm taking over for the day. And we wanted to share with you just some cool things that are happening with our missions department. And so we have Kristen Berghorst right here, who is our missions coordinator. And we just wanted to ask you a few, few questions. Love to answer them. So the first question is, what is the Foundry doing internationally as far as missions goes? Sure. Well, right now we support five international missionaries. We have Pastor Oliver... Austin and Tate Bonema, and Pete and Libby Mishka in Zambia. We have Eric and Jordan Achterhoff in Toronto. And then we have Brett and Karen Curtis as part of YWAM in Kona. And we're really working on supporting them, both financially, but then also we want to make sure that we support them relationally as well. One of the really cool things that is on the horizon is that we are going to be taking our first international mission trips from the Foundry, um, more than one in a year. So we're really excited to get that started next year. Awesome. So yeah. is that something that our groups could get involved with? For sure. We'd love for groups to do that. One mission trip that we still have some room on is going to be our mission trip to Dominican Republic, which is going to take place from February 12th through February 19th. So if you're interested in going on that, please let me know as soon as possible so we can get you on that list. We also have a couple more mission trips coming up. Just don't have a specific date yet for those. One other way, if you're not able to go internationally is we do have our wonderful international missionaries that would love to hear from you, mm -hmm. whether you send them an email, sending them snail mail, because sometimes it takes three to four months to get mail to them, wow. or even some care packages. I know our missionaries would love to hear from our church. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, if you or your group wants to get involved in any of these ways, just shoot an email to matt.kuman at foundrychurch.net and he'll get you connected where you need to go. Well, thank you for your time. Yeah, thanks. And thanks groups.